Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Thursday morning prayer and devotion. We have uh, quite a lengthy list of prayer requests this morning, and so we're going to get right into it, as I know that our devotion may run a little bit longer than usual this morning as well. And I need to be as concise as I can, but I welcome each and every one of you that participate with us daily in this live broadcast, and I cherish this time that we're able to share together. I have a, a couple of praise reports this morning to share with you. Uh, Sister Marsha Moore has shared a praise report today. She was concerned about a spot on her foot due to the fact that she's diabetic. And uh, she and her husband started praying about that and it is already much better. Uh, Michelle Walker reports that her cousin Dustin Phelps, who just had kidney transplant surgery, is doing well. The kidney took and is working good. Uh, we need to pray over these next few days for pain relief, continued strength, and that his body would heal quickly after the surgery. Uh, we need to pray this morning for the devastating wildfires that are going on in California. Uh, Sister Kristen has mentioned specifically the wildfire near Travis Air Force Base, praying that it will be extinguished. Uh, she wants us to pray for Chris and Ann. This is Kristen's sister-in-law, um, Peter, a private at Travis Air Force Base, and Pastor Alvarez and the Fairfield Church family, all of these being affected. So let's remember that need this morning. We have several, uh, many, many physical needs today. Uh, Judy Williams is requesting prayer for her three-year-old grandson, Abel Ray. He was born with PKU. He cannot have protein. So very limited in what he can eat. So we need to pray for a cure uh, for him and for that disease in particular. Uh, Beth Wheatley's nephew, Dylan, has been retested for COVID and is awaiting the results, as is his girlfriend's family. Uh, James Pearson battling high blood pressure. Elder brother and sister Perkins need continued prayers for healing, strength, and encouragement. Robbie Northrup uh, dealing with COPD. Bill Eldreth has several health problems and an urgent unspoken request. Uh, we want to continue to remember Sister Tara Vaughn for her medical issues. Uh, Michael Parrott needs complete healing of Crohn's disease. David Nichols has been dealing with swelling in his feet and legs. Uh, we continue to pray for Rebecca Mitchell's uncle recovering from a mild heart attack. Uh, Rick House has type 2 diabetes and is uh, dealing with several doctor's appointments right now due to a heart murmur and a undiagnosed uh, heart attack previously. Leslie Pride needs healing. Angela Yandel needs relief from stress and stress-related health issues. Um, Judy McDaniel's daughter, Tammy, has some health issues. Renee, still dealing with extreme pain uh, and limited mobility due to her hip and knee problems. Uh, Pastor Del Holman's mother uh, needs our continued prayers as she has been in the hospital and, uh, and needs a healing touch today. Phil and Karen Sampson and family want to continue to remember them. Um, Emily Stanley, diabetes, Shima, very ill with pneumonia. Uh, Sister Terry Adams is dealing with some of her own health issues and needs prayer, as does her grandson Ethan, need a touch for, of healing. Uh, Parkinson's disease is a, a serious issue being dealt with every day by my father and my mother-in-law and also by Russ and by Tim. Let's continue to remember them and pray for a cure for Parkinson's today. Kendra and Renata Ortiz need prayers for health issues. Uh, we want to pray for continued recovery for Cody Robinette, Nick Searcy, Steve Skates, Johnny Ray Hagee, Ethan Harville, Gerald Yealy, Dwayne Rogers' mother-in-law, uh, Adrian Neely, Sylvia Larimore's daughter, uh, Rue, Brandy Bryant, and Brandon Jolly. Uh, other needs that we're lifting up today, Matt and Michaela Perkins, who are trying to start a family. Uh, Sally Waller's granddaughter and her family need our continued prayers. Uh, Bethany Hughes is going through some difficulties right now and really needs prayers for encouragement and strength. And direction. Um, Mandy Plowman says that she's been struggling with some things lately as well and could definitely use our prayers. 
Pam Bunch has a special request for a family member. Terry Bunch and, uh, has an unspoken need. Uh, we want to pray for peace and comfort for the Woolard family uh, at the passing of Rick Woolard's father, uh, Amanda and Josh Rogers in the loss of their baby, and the Carter family in the loss of Brother Larry Carter's father. And we want to add to the list today the family of uh, American Carter. I'm not sure if I said the first name right there, but she uh, was a pastor's wife who was found dead of an apparent suicide. So that family and church family definitely needs our prayers today. We want to continue praying for Debbie Biddick's granddaughter, Katie, and her daughter, Jamie, who have been sick. Uh, I ask that you pray for our VBS here at Greater Vision uh, beginning tonight. If you're in the area at 630 and have children, uh, you are so welcome to come and join us for that tonight. Uh, but let's pray for God's favor upon our VBS and for a great revival to spring forth from our children's ministries here in Puxico. Uh, COVID-19 requests, Robert and Colette. This is a need submitted by Kristen. They both have COVID and Robert is hospitalized. Let's remember Jimmy Roberts, Mike Carter, Tiffany Fowler, who's been on a ventilator, uh, staff and residents of Colonial Home Assisted Living in Donovan, where there's been an outbreak of COVID. Uh, Joey Etheridge's family needs our prayers, several of them battling COVID today. Jeff Stewart, missionary Darla McLean, evangelist Greg Randall, brother Kevin Prince, uh, sister Betty Wayne, uh, patients and staff at Spring Meadows, Bishop Johnson of Denham Springs, Louisiana, and praying, continuing to pray for Pastor Daryl and Sheila Fair as they are uh, still shedding the virus at last report. Uh, COVID-19 related issues are many, and let's continue praying for our president and for our vice president and for our uh, leadership in Congress that God would direct and that they would be open to uh, hear the voice of God to help us through this crisis. We want to pray for nursing home residents and shut-ins. We want to pray protection for all the children who are returning uh, to school at this time. We need to continue to pray against unrest, violence, and division in our country. Uh, we want to pray for those who are suffering with mental health issues. Specifically, we had a request turned in by uh, Cheryl Brenner asking that we pray for her as she is suffering from mental health challenges. So many spiritual needs today. Jennifer and Brenda's family need our prayers. Tasha Ray's husband and sister. Mark and Caitlin. Marsha Moore's children and her granddaughter. Debbie Biddick's daughter, Jamie, and her family. Pam Poyum's children. Terry Adams' children. Peggy Fiedler's children. Judy and Mike Williams' daughter, Jennifer. Art Chandler. Sylvia's family. Beulah's family. Josiah and Lori Arbo's mother. Uh, Carmen's daughter, Grace, needs our continued prayers, as do Connor, Haley, Evie, Rose, and Carl, teenagers who are needing uh, salvation. And those who are battling cancer today, Evelyn Marshall, who's currently undergoing treatments, uh, Jamie Dixon, whose situation is dire at this point, uh, Debbie Biddick's daughter, Jessica, Calvin, Beverly, Deb Clydens, Kim Gladden, Josh Soberg, a friend of Terry Adams, who's suffering with cancer, Kim Stinson, Wanda Barnes, Brother Steve Williford, Brother Anthony Trimble, Delbert Bryant, Laura Lake Caden, Jenna, and Tucker, all small children who are battling against cancer today. And Tucker is a two-year-old with an inoperable brain tumor. We just began praying for him at the beginning of this week. Uh, Linda Fox needs our prayers as she battles cancer, as does David Harris, Diane Escher, Michael Boland, and Dwayne Lewis. So many needs, so many things that we need to pray about this morning. And I appreciate so much each of you who join me every day to uh, work together to see miracles take place, to see lives changed. And uh, there's nothing more important that you can do than to pray for another human being. I appreciate you so much. Kristen, good to see you today. Judy and Mike, good to see you all this morning. Star, Beulah. Pam, Mom and Dad, good to see you all this morning. Thankful for all of you joining us and those who will join us later in the day. We welcome you at whatever time that you are able to view this due to your 
work schedule or school schedule today. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 is where I'm reading from today for our devotion. And it's a very familiar passage of scripture, I'm sure, to all of you. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, notice this, he says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the last couple of days, we've been talking about the few moments that uh, Peter successfully walked on the water. He did it for just a few moments as he attempted to go to Jesus in the midst of a storm. And as soon as he turned his attention away from Jesus, we noticed that he began to sink. As long as his eyes were on Jesus, everything was fine. But his faith was quickly overcome by the, impossi the impossibilities that surrounded him when he turned his attention to his problem, to the boisterous wind and the waves. And you know, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we must forcefully choose to see something else other than our problems. Or I should say, we should uh, choose to see someone else, and that someone else is Jesus. When it's all too easy to focus on the contrariness of those winds and waves that have overtaken us, out of nowhere, we must keep our focus squarely upon the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, it's recorded that in the year that King Uzziah died, uh, Isaiah said, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. To get the full impact of this powerful passage of Scripture, you need to understand the scriptural setting, the nation of Israel was grieving the loss of a popular leader. He was loved by the people, and the reason for his popularity and the love that Israel had for him was because Uzziah was a good king. And you have to understand that after the reigns of David and Solomon, good kings uh, were very few and far between in Israel. And with hurt and the grief that there is, there always comes a certain amount of turmoil and uncertainty that invades the collective soul of the people. But there's also a few things that you must know about Isaiah himself in order to get the full impact of this opening statement in Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah's role was not that of a newsman casually reporting the latest bit of news. He was not some distant bystander or someone who just happened by at the right time and then decided that the day's events were worthy to be recorded in his little journal. Jewish history when comparing Isaiah to another prophet of his time by the name of Micah, records that the major distinction between these two men's ministries was their circles of influence. Micah was a man of the common people, while Isaiah moved within court circles. Micah rubbed shoulders with the common man, but Isaiah rubbed shoulders with the kings. In fact, his close contact with royalty resulted in a title that many Jewish scholars now affix to his name. To them, he is not just Isaiah the prophet. He is the prince of the prophets. And so understand that Isaiah knew King Uzziah up close and personal. He was keenly aware of both his great successes and his most grievous failures. He knew King Uzziah the man. And so when King Uzziah died, Isaiah's grief ran deeper than that of some colony of peasants in a distant province. You see, their collective mourning was for the man who had the road resurfaced in front of their house. But Isaiah was mourning the loss of a friend. While they remembered the disaster relief the king had sent them when much of their city was destroyed by a violent storm, Isaiah remembered the way Uzziah smiled or how he waved and perhaps the way he cocked his head to the left or right when he was getting ready to give someone a piece of advice. The point I'm trying to make is this. If anybody would have had trouble seeing the Lord, in this situation, if anybody would have found themselves swept up in the tumultuous tides of despair, Isaiah would certainly have had as justifiable an excuse as anyone. Isaiah was acutely aware that the society that he was living in was in turmoil. 
he realized more than anyone else that with King Uzziah's death came instability in the government, in the nation. He could still see that there was wickedness all around him, but in the midst of all of that, he caught a glimpse of God. And with his gaze fixed upon the Almighty, he began to understand his holy purpose. And he said in Isaiah 6, 1 through 5, basically this, in the midst of all of his trouble that was going on, he said, I saw also the Lord. And when I saw him, he was sitting on his throne. And he was high and he was lifted up and his train filled the temple. Isaiah said, I saw my God surrounded by angels. And those angels were crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. He said the doorposts shook under the sounds of worship coming from the mouths of angels and the throne of God was filled with the smoke of his glory. And I don't want you to miss, most importantly this morning, Isaiah's response to his vision of God. He then said this, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You know, it's the strangest thing. When your eyes are on the Lord, instead of being hypersensitive to what is wrong with everyone else, you suddenly realize that you're not all that in a bag of chips yourself, as, uh, as I've heard the young folks say. Before he saw the Lord in his situation, Isaiah was thinking, woe is the leadership, woe is the nation, woe is my neighbor. You know, he was kind of policing that no wake zone that we talked about yesterday. But when he saw the Lord, he said, woe is me. And because he had his eyes on the Lord instead of the waves of trouble that were all around him, Isaiah was able to become a beacon of hope in the midst of of a wicked generation. When others could only see problems and perhaps things to blame the problems on, Isaiah, Isaiah was able to begin sharing the solution and he present or spent his days proclaiming the salvation of Jehovah. Do you really want to make a difference in your generation? Isaiah showed us how to do it. Just get your eyes on Jesus and then keep your eyes on Jesus and you can make a difference today. Let's go to prayer right now, and let's ask God to just take over in these situations. If you would, call these names before the Lord with me today, and let's believe God for miracles, signs, and wonders in their lives. As we focus upon him, we're going to see answers today come to pass. Lord Jesus, I love you. I worship you. I praise your mighty and righteous name. There is none like you in the heavens or in the earth. There's none before you, after you, beside you. You are God all by yourself. And I thank you, Lord, that you've been revealed to us. Hallelujah. That your holiness, God, is our example. Lord, that you are the Prince of Peace. That you are the Everlasting Father. That you are the Wonderful Counselor. And God, everything that we need, we find in you this morning. You're the answer for every situation. You're the answer to every question of our minds today. And we thank you, Lord, that you're available, that you've made yourself available to us. Lord, that you're listening to our prayers, that your ear is attentive to what we're uh, calling out before you this morning. We give you the thanks and the praise. We pray that your kingdom would come in this earth, that your will would be done in our own lives today, even as it is in heaven. We pray, God, that every need would be supplied today according to your heavenly riches, according to the abundance of your storehouse today. We trust in you and in your provision to give us this day our daily bread. We trust in you, God, to forgive us of all of our failures and our shortcomings and help us, God, as we begin to sink in the mire of this world and amongst the wind and waves of this uh, situation that we're in, even in pandemic right now. God, that as we begin to sink from time to time, that you would help us, Lord, that you would reach out and lift us up and help us to redirect our focus back to our source today, which is you and only you. We pray for healing today, God, for all those that are suffering with physical needs. We pray for Judy's grandson Abel, Lord. We believe for healing for this uh, incurable disease, Lord, that there would be a cure. And we know, Lord, that in the absence of a cure, that you are still the great and mighty God and you're able to work a miracle. We pray for Dylan today, Lord, that his COVID test would come back negative and for his girlfriend and her family, Lord, that they would be free of the virus today. We pray for James Pearson. 
for healing, for Elder and Brother Sister Perkins, for a continued touch of healing and strength and, and encouragement today. We pray for Robbie Northrup, Lord, that you would touch his body, for Bill Eldreth, Lord, that you would heal him and move in his unspoken needs today. We pray for Tara, Lord, that you would touch her body today, give her peace of mind in the situation that she's been dealing with with her health. We pray for Michael Parrott, Lord. We believe you for his complete healing of Crohn's disease. We believe for the swelling in the feet and legs to go down for David Nichols right now. We believe for full recovery for Rebecca Mitchell's uncle from heart attack today and for Rick House for recovery, Lord, from his heart problems and for healing of diabetes today. We curse diabetes in the name of Jesus. We curse every heart issue in the name of Jesus. We believe you for healing of our bodies, Lord. We pray for healing today for Leslie Pride, for Ansley Yandel, God, that she would find relief from her stress, that she would turn to you in her time of need and receive healing. We pray for Judy's daughter, Tammy, God. You see her health issues, and we believe for her healing today. We believe for Renee to receive a touch right now in her body in her hips and in her knee joints right now. Let the pain leave her body. Let the mobility be restored right now. We pray for Pastor Holman's mother today. God, that you would touch her and minister healing right now to her body. In Jesus' name, we pray for Phil and Karen Sampson's family. God, that you would move on their behalf today. We pray for my Aunt Emily for healing of diabetes right now. We believe for Shema today, God, Lord, to be healed of pneumonia. We pray for Sister Terry Adams, Lord, that you would touch her as she's dealing with her own health issues. Touch her grandson, Ethan, today. Lord, with your healing power, we pray against Parkinson's disease in the mighty name of Jesus. Believe me for healing for my dad and for my mother-in-law, for Russ and for Tim today and for all others who are suffering with the effects of this terrible disease. We pray for Kendra and Renato today, Lord, that you would touch them and minister healing where it's needed right now. We pray for continued recovery for all these that you've spared in accidents, Lord, in uh, chronic health situations. Uh, we believe for Cody and Nick and Steve and Johnny Ray, Ethan and Gerald and Dwayne's mother-in-law. We believe for Adrian and Sylvia's daughter, for Rue and for Brandy and for Brandon God. You are our healer. You're the restorer of all that's been broken in our lives, and we believe you for their continued recovery today. We believe for relief from the devastating fires that are going on in California right now. We believe you, Lord, on behalf of the, those who are suffering there in the Travis Air Force Base area. We pray for Chris and Ann. We pray for Peter right now. We pray for Pastor Alvarez and the church family there at Fairfield, God. Be with them today. Protect them in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for Matt and Michaela, God, that you would guide their lives. Be with them, Lord, as they're attempting to start a family. You know what you have for their future, and we pray your blessing upon them. We pray for Sally's granddaughter and her family this morning. We pray for Bethany, Lord, as she's going through difficult times, that you would be with her and that you would strengthen and direct her life. You see Mandy Plowman, Lord, we ask that you would help her through the things that she's struggling with. We pray for Pam Bunch, Lord, and for her family. You see this special need in her family today. Touch that family member, God. Move in that situation, we pray. We pray for Terry Bunch and for Bill Eldreth, Lord, that you would move in their unspoken needs. We pray for peace and comfort for the family of this pastor's wife, American Carter. Lord, we pray that you would be with them and comfort them in this tragic situation, Lord. We pray for the Woolard family for comfort right now in their loss of, of their patriarch in that family. We pray for the Rogers family that you would comfort them in the loss of their baby. Lord, we pray for the Carter family and the loss of Brother Larry Carter's father. Be with them, Lord. Comfort them today in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, you are our comforter. We give you praise that we can know you, Lord, in this way, in the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. You give peace, Lord, in the midst of our storms today. We pray, Lord, for Debbie Biddick's granddaughter, Katie, for her daughter, Jamie, Lord, for a healing touch right now. We pray, God, for 
uh, our VBS starting tonight, uh, that your hand of favor would be upon it, God, that you would anoint our staff uh, to minister to the children, that you would anoint uh, the children to receive your word, anoint their minds, God, prepare them as they are going back to school here in Puxico next week. Uh, we pray for protection for all the children that are going back to school in, at this time. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for all those that are battling COVID in their families. Robert and Colette, we pray for healing today for them. For Jimmy Roberts uh, and for Mike Carter, for Tiffany Fowler, for the staff and residents of Colonial Home, for, for the Joey Etheridge's family. We pray for Jeff Stewart and Donna McLean. We pray for Evangelist Greg Randall, Lord. We pray for Brother Kevin Prince and for Sister Betty Wayne. We pray for all those, uh, uh, the patients and staff at Spring Meadows uh, where that outbreak has taken place there. We pray, God, for Bishop Johnson, for Pastor and Sister uh, Sheila Fair, God, who are recovering but are still under quarantine. We believe for them to be completely cleared in the name of Jesus. We pray for our president and for our vice president and for the coronavirus task force and for our congressional leaders, Lord, that you would lead and guide and direct them. Lord, speak direction to them and help them to be in a place, in a mindset to, that they would be ready to receive your direction. We know that you control the affairs of men, that you're on the throne today, God. And Lord, that ultimately your will is going to be done. But I pray, God, that as many as possible, Lord, in our nation and in our world, would bow their knee willingly before your throne, God, and not be forced in that great day to acknowledge you when it's too late. Uh, we believe for revival in our land. Uh, oh, God, let revival spring forth from every corner of the globe. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we pray for economic recovery today. We pray, Lord, uh, for our nursing home residents and shut-ins, that you would protect them in Jesus' name, that you would comfort and, and strengthen their hearts today. We pray against unrest and violence and looting and division and exploitation in our nation. In Jesus' name, we pray for all those who are suffering with mental health issues. Uh, Lord, you see Cheryl Brenner and her courage in acknowledging her need of a touch mentally today. We pray for your healing for her mind. We pray, Lord, for all the spiritual needs that have been presented to us. For Tasha's husband and sister, for Jennifer and Brenda's family, for Mark and Caitlin, for Marsha Moore's children and for her granddaughter, for Debbie Biddick's daughter Jamie and her family, for their spiritual needs, for Pam Pulliam's children, for Terry Adams' children, Peggy Fiedler's children, Judy and Mike's daughter today. God, all of these uh, need uh, uh, salvation. They need restoration. They need deliverance, God. We pray for Art Chandler and for Sylvia's family and for Beulah's family, for Josiah, for Lori Arbo's mother, in Jesus' name, we pray for Carmen's daughter, Grace. We pray for these teenagers, Lord, that Carmen is dealing with. Connor, Haley, Evie, Rose, and Carl. Lord, they need your salvation. We believe you, God, for salvation in our families, and in our communities, in our workplaces. Lord, you are the answer today to every question. And we believe in your name and we trust in you. While others trust in the things of this world, oh God, we trust in your name. We give you the praise for what you're doing. I want to give you praise this morning, God, because you're the healer of cancer. And we lift up everyone that's afflicted with cancer today. Believing for a miracle right now. Let your healing virtue flow into their bodies as they're facing chemotherapy and radiation treatments. Uh, God, let your spirit just wash over them right now. I bring to you Evelyn Marshall today, believing for healing, God. Lord, Jamie Dixon, uh, no matter how dire the situation, you're still able, God. We believe for Debbie's daughter, Jessica. We believe on behalf of Calvin and on behalf of Beverly. We believe for healing for Deb Clydens and for Kim Gladden and for Josh Soberg, for Terry Adams' friend, for Kim Stinson, Lord, with stage four cancer. We believe for her healing right now. We believe for Wanda Barnes. We believe for Brother Williford dealing with early stage prostate cancer. We know, God, that he's going to overcome this and overcome it quickly. We pray for Brother Trimble right now, Lord, as he's battling liver and lung cancer today. Lord, we believe for a miracle for him. We believe with him. We agree with him and with his family and his church for his healing right now. We believe for my Uncle Delbert, Lord. Stay
stage four lung cancer is no obstacle for you. You are able to restore. We pray for these children who suffer today. Lorelei, Caden, Jenna, and Tucker, believing for their complete recovery. We pray for Linda Fox and for David Harris, for Diane Escher and for Michael Boland and for Dwayne Lewis today. We believe God for their complete healing right now in the name of Jesus. We release faith. We release the gifts of healing and the working of miracles. I pray you would use this prayer team today, wherever that they're at, God, to be a vessel of your purpose today in someone's life, that they would be a minister of your healing and of your truth into some situation today. And we give you the praise for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody ought to say amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow morning, same time, same place, as we conclude yet another week of prayer and devotion and believing God for great things going into our weekend. God bless you in Jesus' name.